In this video, I'm going to be talking about how to design the end plate for the fixture assembly using Inventor. So going to Inventor, just go File, New, and you can either choose Part here or you can click this button here which opens up a new window. Basically, we're going to select Standard.IPT for Inventor Part, and we can go Create, and this will open up a new file where we can start designing. While that's loading up, I'm just going to go back to the drawing so we can look at what we're trying to do. Basically, it's a four inch square and a half inch thick piece of um, steel and that we have holes on each corner that are inset at a half inch in or basically the spacing between the holes are three inches. Then we have a large one inch diameter hole through the middle and then finally we have four holes that are on a circle that the diameter of that circle is 1.625 inches. Notice that the corner holes have a diameter of 0.26 inches and these four holes here have a diameter of 0.19 inches. So going back to the file where we're going to be doing the designing, we're going to be doing a 2D sketch. Notice when I hover over this I can click the top or the bottom. The bottom allows me to choose different things, but what I really want to do is just collect the 2D sketch, and so I can just select the top here, and it gives me the different coordinate planes. I'm going to do my sketch on the XY plane, and then once I have a sketch, it brings up the sketch tab, and I'm going to create a rectangle. I'm going to, I'm going to do the drop down and do a two point rectangle with the center, so I'm just going to click, click the center point and I can move out here. I can um, just click now and dimension it later. Um, you could also dimension it as you're creating it. To dimension the part, um, you can hit D for dimension or just click this button here. And then basically we're going to select this side and move out and type in 4, enter. And if it disappears, you're probably zoomed in too far, so you can zoom out a little bit. And then we can just click this side and go out, and we can hit 4 as well. Now we have a 4 by 4 inch um, rectangle or square. And now I'm going to in extrude it into three dimensions. And to do that, we can hit Finish Sketch, and then hit E or this Extrude button here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit because I'm zoomed in. Notice that it by default wants to extrude it to one inch thick in the positive Z direction. And I know it's in the positive Z by looking at this gnomon down here. I'm going to go a half inch and I'm just going to um, do a symmetric extrude where it basically extrudes a quarter inch in the positive Z and a quarter inch in the negative Z and then the XY plane is actually in the middle of the part. It's not necessary to do that, but I often like to max maximize symmetry in my designs and this will allow um, for more symmetry if I wanted to do additional changes later. So now I'm going to hit OK and now I have a 3D model of the actual plate. Now I need to put the holes in. And again, there are so many ways to do these um, different holes or these operations. There is not just one way. I'm just showing you a way that um, seems to make sense to me. So I'm going to hit Start Sketch, and I'm going to click this face here. And what I'm going to do is click the Project Geometry button and click the face, and it basically gives me this outline. The next thing that I'm going to do is hit the Offset, click the projected geometry and then move in. And I want to move in a half of an inch, so I'm going to type in 0.5. If I did not do that um, and I just clicked and I needed to dimension it later, I could have dimensioned the distance from this wall to this wall to a half of an inch. But basically what this does is gives me a square that um, is three, in three inches on each side and or we could say a half inch in from each corner. And then what we can do is just make four points. And notice they snap into the corners of the square. And then with those four points, 
I can make the holes. And so what I'm going to do is go finish sketch. And I'm going to hit the hole button. And the diameter of those holes is 0.26 inches. And so it's already set at 0.26 inches, and so I'm good. Um, Notice um, the reason why it was already set that way for me is because I used it before. Um, and the if I highlight over here, notice that the hole goes all the way through. I don't want to go a certain distance. I want to basically go all the way through. And so I can just go OK. And that creates four holes. The next thing that I'm going to do is create another sketch. And I'm going to make a circle that is one inch in diameter. And I'm going to extrude and cut away that hole. And so there's a couple ways to make holes. One, you can use the point and then use the hole function. Or two, you can make a circle and then just do an extrude cut. And that's what I'm doing here. Right now it wants to add a half of an inch of material. But if I go here and go cut, it will cut away that material. And then I can go OK. And it creates that. If I wanted to make a hole instead of um, an extrude cut um, using the point, all I'd have to do is do the sketch, make the center point, and then make a hole that um, was one inch in diameter. Finally, I'm going to make the circle um, the to basically make the circle where the four remaining holes are al aligned on. And so I'm going to go out and dimension this to 1.625 inches. And then I'm going to just use the point again and click here, basically on these four parts of the circle here that match up to the drawing that we saw. And notice that the diameter is 0.19 inches. And so once I go here, I'll just go finish sketch, click the hole button, and we're going to change the diameter to 0.19 inches. Then once the diameter is 0.19 inches, we can just hit OK. Notice um, that the part is now designed and I have an extrusion and the sketch, the original sketch that was consumed by the original extrusion. And then I have this hole function, which is the four holes that I put in in each of the corners. And then I have this extrude, um, which is the cut. And then finally, if I expand this out, I have the sketch that shows the circle with the four points. And if you needed to change dimensions or anything, you could just actually right click and go edit sketch, or you could just double click on it. But basically when you're done, you shouldn't have any sketches um, that are not being consumed. Finally, um, let's change the material. If you go File, I Properties and you go to physical, you can change the type of material. We're just going to go um, to mild steel, and so, or we can do steel alloy. Either one is fine. And then we can go apply. And what that does is not only changes the color of the way it looks, it also updates the mass um, based upon the density of the material, and it gives um, moments of inertia and things like that. That can become useful when you're looking at things that you're actually moving and you want to know the dynamics of something. It's not as necessary for this part, but it's something to get in the habit of, of just always defining the material properties. So I'm going to go a close here, and here is the final part. So you're going to go File, Save As, and save it as the end plate.